spoštovani podsredsednik Evropske komisije, spoštovani novinarji, spoštovani drugi prisotni. Torej, najprej ne pomem, da sem izjemno besel, da si je gospod podpredsednik komisije vzel čas in se ustavil tudi v Sloveniji, torej poleg samega srečanja z predsednikom vlade v menoji in pa seveda predsednikom države, je bil prav ta del, ki smo ga upravili v tej uri, ključen, da smo se pogovorili o tem, kakšne so prioritete našega predsedovanja. V tem pogledu seveda moram reči, da je komisija naš partner, torej naš zaveznik, naš podpornik in vesel sem, da je tako stališče podpredsednik tudi izrazil. So, uh, allow me to welcome the Vice uh, President of the European Commission uh, to Slovenia. I'm truly pleased that uh, you have managed to take the time uh, to stop in Slovenia as well. You have held a meeting with the Prime Minister, the President of Slovenia and myself. Uh, this meeting just now was very important in order to hold a key debate on the priorities of Slovenian uh, Presidency. And I'm glad that you managed to confirm also that we are indeed partners, Slovenia and the European Commission. Če se je ozrebno osobino, o kateri so govorili danes, je seveda bila ta razdeljena v štiri ključne podarke, torej v tisti del, ki ga bo Slovenija kot predsedujoča na področju notranjih zadev v naslednje pol leta poskušala izpeljati čim bolje, torej najprej gre za znani pakt o migracijah v ozilu, tukaj seveda sem bil vesel, ko je gospod podpredsednik nekako najavil, da je morda možno, torej ni izključujoče, da tisti del pakta, ki se nanaša na Evropsko agencijo za ozil, bodočo Evropsko za agencijo ozil, morda zaključijo že Portugalci. Vsakega uspeha bomo Slovenci oziroma mi veseli, ne glede na to, da bi to morda lahko bil tudi uspeh našega predsedovanja, vendar ne gre za za to, kdo je bolj uspešen, ampak gre za to, da se nekako delajo koraki naprej. Po drugi strani je pred nami pomemben del tega pakta, ki se nanaša na Eurodak, torej verjamem, da lahko Slovenci tukaj na tem področju naredimo velik napredek, morda ne samega sprejema, vendar le pripeljamo zadevo daleč, tako daleč, da bo to možno sprejeti saj v času francoskega predsedovanja. Posebno mesto seveda je bilo izpostavljeno, vezano na vračanje, torej gre seveda za problematiko odgovornosti in solidarnosti, to je najtežji del tega pakta, kjer sem podpredsedniku nekako izpostavil to, kar govorim skos, da ne bomo vljubljali preveč, raj bomo naredili več, se mi zdi nepotrebno najavljati velikih uspehov, če vemo, da so ti pravzaprav zelo težki ali pa da jih bomo zelo težko dosega zaradi predvsej različnih stalič, stalič šlanic. Po vsem na koncu me je podpredsednik upozoril še na pomembno zadevo, torej na pak oziroma legislaturo, ki se nanaša na del kritične infrastrukture, torej to, kar se je zgodilo nazadne v Združenih državah Amerike, torej ta cyber attack na njihovo na njihovo transport, na njihove transportne linije na avtovodov in pravzaprav stanja, ki smo ga v Jugoslovani govorimo o rokovajih, seveda dobro poznali v tistih letih, ko ni bilo dovolj olja oziroma možnosti natočiti benzin na benzinskih črpalkah. Ta del, bom takoj počal, bom takoj vsej, ta del pa seveda, moram reči, da zdaj ni bil tako izpostavljen, je pa tukaj potrebno povedati, da si bomo to gotovo, da bomo to gotovo postavili na agendo, torej na dnevni red našega predsedovanja, pri čemer sem gospodu podpredsedniku predstavil, zakaj tega nismo vzeli, zaenkrat še toliko obozirati, zaradi tega, ker to ni področje, ki bi ga pokrivalo pred nas notrejno ministerstvo, ampak je razaljeno med obramno ministerstvo in pa ministerstvo za javno upravo, pa vendar le bomo na podlagi priporočila podpredsednika tudi to v bistvu obravnavali prioritetno. Ok, ima vrat? Ok, ima vrat? Um, as long as I can read my notes. Sir. Um, so, uh, our debate uh, evolved around four important topics, of course, in line with the activities of the Internal Home Affairs of our Ministry. 
the first thing that uh, I discussed with the Vice President is the Pact on Migration and Asylum, of course. And uh, it is um, also to be expected, the way we touched on the European Asylum Agency, to be indeed discussed and completed during Slovenian presidency, if not under Portuguese presidency already. And it does not really matter who holds the honor of completing any individual uh, field of debate, but it is important that we are taking steps forward. Uh, the second important, and then of course we also discussed Eurodac, and we hope that uh, Slovenia will manage to uh, adopt all the, all the proposals, if not under Slovenian, then under French presidency. Uh, the second debate evolved around return operations, especially in line with solidarity and responsibility of the member states. And um, I said to the vice president that I can make no promises, but we prefer to actually uh, perform. And um, I, we both agreed that it's going to be quite difficult uh, to reach uh, everything, to achieve everything, because there are different interests of many different member states of the EU. And I uh, was notified by the Vice President on something very important, which is the legislation uh, surrounding the cyber attack uh, in the United States of America uh, and it was a case of the transport of the oil pipeline and we know that uh, we have not focused uh, sufficiently on that matter. Nevertheless, as it was noted, I agree that uh, uh, this can be put on the agenda of the Slovenian presidency as well. And uh, I expect that to happen, but we are truly aware that this was a difficulty. We haven't been focusing on that much but I notified the Vice President that this actually is uh, something that in Slovenia is uh, in the hands of not only our Ministry, but also of the Ministry of the Defence and the Ministry of uh, Public Administration. In just the case, I will say that I will thank the President of the European Commission that they will be here to the high agenda of the expansion and expansion of the Western Balkan. To bo ena od tem predsedovanja zelo pomembna tema. Tudi na našem področju se zavedamo pomembnosti sodelovanja z zahodnobalkanskimi državami. Podpredsednika sem informiral tudi o tem, da bomo že v tem tednu, torej sredo in četvrte, gostili notrene ministre tega držav in seveda se pogovarjali pretežno o tem, kar nas nekako vse teži, torej pri pri preprečevanje kriminala, posebej trgovine z blagom, trgovine z ljudmi, trgovine z blagom, torej tihotapljenje migrantov in vse tisto, kar v bistvu bi lahko z boljšim sodelovanjem vseh držav, posebej policije, v največji meri preprečali. Verjamo, da bo, kot sem povedal v začetku, komisija naš kredibilen partner, verjamo, da nam bodo tudi pomagali, kajti njihove izkušnje so enormne in verjamo, da bo na koncu Ne, da bi komisija bila nek naš supervizor, ali nekaj podobnega, ampak partner, ki bo uspešno pomagala k našemu predsedovanju. So in conclusion, uh, I wish to uh, thank uh, the Vice President for also agreeing that uh, one of the important uh, fields to discuss during Slovenian presidency is the enlargement. Western Balkans is undoubtedly going to be um, uh, put on the agenda of Slovenian presidency and we're aware of the importance of cooperation with other states in the region. Uh, so the Ministry of the Interior, uh, and I explained that to the Vice President, is going to focus uh, in the upcoming uh, ministerial meeting of the Ministers of, the, uh, of Home Affairs on Wednesday and uh, Thursday this week that we are going to discuss the issues of human trafficking, white slavery, migrant smuggling, and so on. And we believe that uh, holding such uh, high-level discussions uh, we can count on, uh, cred on the European Commission being a credible partner to us and uh, I explained to the uh, Vice uh, President that we believe we have all the support since the Commission of course holds huge enormous experience and we see the Commission not as some kind of a supervisor but rather a partner. Thank you Minister. Uh, the very fact that um, Standing next to you in Ljubljana is, is a first uh, tangible proof that uh, we're coming out of the pandemic, uh, largely thanks to the continued success of our vaccination strategy. 
So uh, I think it's uh, useful that we start uh, by reflecting on how successfully uh, Europe uh, coped uh, and um, also something that uh, would be one of the first tasks of the Slovenian presidency is to continue to prove, to show what a union of democracies like ours can deliver in times of crisis. Spoštovani gospod minister, že samo dejstvo, da lahko uživo tako le stojim poleg vas, v Ljubljani kaže na to, da počasi res izhajamo iz krize, ki je za nami, predvsem zahvaljujoč uspešni strategiji cepljenja. In mislim, da je smiselno začeti z besedami uspeha, kajti vse, kar nam je uspelo, kaže na odlično delovanje katerekoli skupine držav v demokraciji in tako smo lahko na nek način že zaključili eno prvih nalog. At, at a general level, this presidency uh, is important for a number of reasons. First, because, uh, fingers crossed, this would be, in all likelihood, the first physical presidency, with lots of physical meetings, starting with the visit of the College of Commissioners here in Ljubljana in early July. But also, because this presidency would have to steer the recovery and resilience plans that Europe has uh, enacted, and also because this presidency has rightly identified as priorities uh, things that are common uh, shared interests with the European Union, resilience, preparedness, Western Balkans, and I'm very flattered to see also the European way of life being one of the four key priorities. Predsedovanje Slovenije je pomembno iz več razlogov. Predvsem gre za prvo predsedovanje, ki se bo lahko izvajalo fizično, začenjši z vrhom oziroma srečanjem komisarjev Julija. Prav tako pa se bo tudi slovensko predsedovanje Evropske unije usmerilo v izvedbo načrta za okrevanje in odpornost. Vse prioritete, ki ste si jih zastavili, kažejo na naš skupni interes, ker se nanašajo tudi za interes Evropske unije kot celote. Posvetili se boste odpornosti, zahodnemu Balkanu, pripravljenosti in sodelovanju Evropske unije. So let me say a few things on, on my portfolio responsibilities. Uh, the minister uh, covered most of them. Uh, first on migration, um, we have a good traction to get agreements on migration, to show that Europe is able to discuss and agree on migration files. Uh, we have the blue car directive uh, uh, recently agreed. We're moving uh, on an agreement towards the European asylum proposal. And I'm very encouraged by the commitment and the willingness of Minister Hoss to push his colleagues towards common ground on the pact for asylum and migration, where indeed we still miss the right balance between responsibility and solidarity, something that will be at the heart of his uh, work in the six months to come. No, uh, dovolite, da se dotaknem še sam portfelja, ki se nanaša na mojo pristojnost in mojo odgovornost. Gospod minister je namreč uh, omenil skoraj, da vse, za kar sem zadolžen, predvsem pa je pri mojem delu bo spredil vprašanje migracij. In izrednega pomena je, da se je uh, spoštovani uh, gospod minister usmeril prav v to, da bomo skupaj lahko dosegli dogovor o evropskem azilnem predlogu, ki mu bo sledila tudi direktiva in zato pozdravljam uh, napore mis, uh, gospoda ministra Hojsa, da uh, stremi k skupnemu dogovoru predvsem o vzvezi s paktom o migracijah in azilu. I omenil pa je tudi že načelo odgovornosti in solidarnosti, ki je tu ključnega pomena. I want to be very clear on this. Europe needs this agreement now more than ever before. But at the same time, this agreement would not come by statements or declarations of intent. It will only come through hard work and efforts to bridge the differences between the different sensitivities. And I think we are on the right track to get there. 
in najjasno povdarim. Evropa take dogovore in tovrstne sporazume zagotovo potrebuje bolj kot kadarkoli doslej. Ne bo šlo za neke prazne izjave ali pa deklaracije o namenu za sodelovanje, ampak predvsem za zelo trdo delo, ki bo zagotovo, če bomo uspeli priti do dogovorov, vodilo v premoščanje razlik in tistih senzitivnih točk. For the rest, we are at the same wavelength with the Slovenian presidency on the need to progress on security union with these proposals uh, that would allow us to shield Europe against cyber attacks like the ones we saw in the United States, to advance on Schengen reform where proposals are on the table uh, since last week and more to come, and to continue fighting the smugglers in Western Balkans, in the Mediterranean, and in the Aegean Sea. This work will also continue during the Presidency. In uh, glede vsega ostalega smo Slovenijo zagotovo na skupni valovni dolžini. Pomembno se je seveda posvetiti tudi skupni varnostni uniji in pa, kot sva že oba omenila, uh, kibernetskim napadom, kot so se zgodili in zagotovo je v spredju tudi šengenska reforma. Prejšnji teden smo že dobili na mizo nekaj predlogov, še nekaj bo sledilo. Pomembno pa je preprečiti tudi tihotapljenje ljudi uh, skozi območje Zahodnega Balkana, Mediterana in Egejskega morja. So, thank you, Minister Dear Ales. Uh, I, I told the Prime Minister this morning, and I would also tell President Pahor uh, later this afternoon, that uh, uh, this common agenda is, is something that is happening, and we are here, as you rightly said, to help you. Uh, we will be your partners, we will be your trusted partners, and uh, the fact that you yourself, you are an engineer, you are a practical man that will help immensely in this line of business. We need practicality and, and hard work. Thank you again for having me. Spoštovani gospod kolega, gospod Aleš, dovolite, da se vam tudi sam zahvalim. Gospodu predsedniku vlade sem že povedal, da bom enako dejal tudi v popodanskem srečanju z gospodom predsednikom Pahorjem, da zagotovo je naša agenda skupna, da je Evropska komisija partner Sloveniji, partner, ki mu lahko zaupate. Vidim pa, da ste, spoštovani gospod minister, tudi inženir in to je prav tisto, kar v teh časih nam več najbolj potrebujemo. To pa je praktičnost in v prakso usmerjeno delovanje. Hvala. Hvala lepa, se govornikom za izjavi. Imamo čas za eno vprašanje. Marjan, boste vi potem pa dve pa hitro, da ne pustimo predsednika države. So, thank you very much. We have time for one question and then the gentleman will need to leave. Marjan Rešiga je nabil Slovenija. Moje vprašanje za oba, verjamem, da ste imeli malo časa, da se o vsem pogovorite, ampak zanimivo bi bilo slišati, kakšne je stanje odnosov s Turčijo. Tako glede izpoštovanja migrantskega sporozova, kot tudi glede pogajanj o morskih mejah. Predlagam, da nam dava vprašanje odgovori gospod podpredsednik, ki je povedal, da bo mislil, da v naslednjih dneh obiskal v Turčijo. So, uh, a question uh, refers to, uh, the gentleman said he's on the radio Slovenia, uh, I'm aware of the fact that you gentlemen had very little time to discuss everything, but I believe it would be quite interesting to hear uh, what you think about uh, the cooperation with Turkey, especially uh, evolving the question of migration agreement and then of course also protection of the sea border. Yes. Um, the external dimension of migration policy is important. We will never be able to manage internally unless we are able to manage externally. And this requires partnership uh, agreements with uh, all our neighbors, the countries of origin and transit of migratory flows. <laughs> Unijo izrednega pomena in zagotovo ne moremo zagotoviti varnosti na notranjih mejah, če se ne posvetimo sodelovanju z državami, ki mejejo na Evropsko unijo, kar pa seveda vodi v podpis ustreznih sporazumov. Since 2016 with Turkey we had an agreement, a statement that worked. It helped us to manage better migratory flows. It 
involved the European Union helping Turkey to support the three million Syrian refugees that are on their territory. And our ambition is to strike a similar agreement for the future. Leta 2016 je Evropska unija z Turčijo podpisala ustrezen sporazum, ki je zagotovo odlično deloval na naše vsejeno migracijske tokove, upravljanje z njimi in vse je delovalo v redu. Predvsem pa je Evropska unija ponudila Turčiji podporo pri reševanju vprašanja trih milijonov sirijskih beguncev, ki so se znašli v Turčiji. This is something also that our leaders requested in the European Council, and this is something that it was discussed in the recent visit by President Michel and von der Leyen in Ankara. I will myself go to Turkey in Antalya uh, on the 18th of June. So there is a certain positive dynamic in engaging Turkey on this positive agenda for migration, and I hope we will be able to make it. No, uh, pomembno je omeniti, da so se naši vodje tako z evropskim svetom oziroma gospod uh, Mišelin in uh, gospod von der Leyen, sta se že srečala 18. junija, pa se tudi sam odpravljamo v Turčijo in takrat uh, mislim, da bom lahko videl malo bolj pobliže, kaj se tu dogaja oziroma kako stvari zdaj tečejo. Hvala lepa, še zadnje vprašanje prosim. Uh, Tadej vrašovni potrebe. Torej, uh, gospod pod, podpredsednik, uh, Vprašanje za vas in seveda tudi za gospoda ministra, predsednik Pahor, z njim se boste tudi srečali, je razmero v Sloveniji upisal kot razmere povečane politične negotovosti. Tu so protivladni protesti, ki trajajo že približno leto, tu je še v bistvu zaplet iz medij financiranja in Slovenske testovne agencije, ki je za predsedovanje sigurno zelo pomembna, prihajajo tudi opozorila iz evropskih institucij, Kako mislite, da lahko te okoliščine vplivajo na samo predsedovanje Slovenije? Hvala. So question for the Vice President and also for the Minister. Since I know you're going to meet with the President Pahor this afternoon, the President has currently described the political situation in Slovenia as a situation of an increased political uncertainty. We have had protests against the government of the last year and there was a difficulty with the financing of the media of the uh, uh, Slovenian press uh, agency uh, and uh, also financing of uh, the media. So the institutions have been drawing attention to that and uh, I'm wondering how do you see this influencing Slovenian presidency? Well, I, it is not my duty and I never do. I, I, I do not uh, think that uh, I can offer a running commentary on the internal political uh, situation of our member states. Um, this is not for Brussels. Uh, what I can say for, on behalf of the European Union on a broader perspective on the issues that have been uh, the object of discussions in this country is that I personally um, have no doubt that Slovenia and its government will take all the necessary measures to uh, uphold the values that define both Slovenia and the European Union. I have no doubt about that. No, zagotovo ni moja dožnost komentirati notranjega političnega stanja v katerikoli državi članici. V imenu Evropske unije pa nasplošno vprečam in tudi osebno to nekakor ne dvomim, da bo sta Slovenija in slovenska vlada prevzela vse potrebne ukrepe, da bo sta zagotovo zaščitili vrednote Slovenije kot tudi Evropske unije. Pa morda še jaz povem besedo dve o tem, torej, če bi realno pogledali na problematiko, lahko bo tudi imel zapravo brez izjemno glasnih zvočnikov, kjer seveda prednači tudi vaša televizija, ne torej Pop TV, pa javna reda bi televizija, recimo te razsežnosti, teh protestov ne bi bile take, kot jih poslušate prikazati. Torej, če pogledamo dejansko številke, ko se tam zbere 12 do 15 tisoč ljudi, je to pravzaprav mizerna številka. Moram reči, da tega, kar se poskuša prezentirati tudi gospodu podpredsedniku, ne bi bilo brez izvoza teme naših novinarjev v Evropo. Na zadnje, kot slišim, je neslavno propadil tudi poskus evropske poslanke z Levice, torej gospe Tanja Fajon, da bi v Evropi komentirali oziroma razpravljali o vladvini prava v Sloveniji. Vladvina prava je v Sloveniji seveda v polnosti zagotovljena, 
Če bolj kot to pa seveda so zagotovljene vaše pravice, poročate nemoteno, poročate vsem, kar želite, poročate brez kakršne koli cenzure. To, da bi pa država konec koncev začela financirati če medije, to pa se mi zdi pozaprav naravnost sprovržena ideja. Torej ostaja problematika financiranja Slovenske skore policije, ki jo bomo rešili v naslednjem tednu. Vi pa se potem tako tako financirate z apsolutnim kartelnim dogovorom oziroma s tem, da pravzaprav ozorpirate oleševalce v precej preveliki meri, kot bi jo za to, da bi bil trg dejansko vrontežen, smeli ali pa bili upravičeni pridobivati. So, allow me just to add a comment on my behalf. You, the gentleman is from POP TV, let me just come back. Okay, so we can see that the media in Slovenia has been working without any kind of censorship whatsoever, and especially your TV station being POP TV, as well as the public television and radio station of Slovenia, uh, have not been reporting other than uh, creating this difficulty and reporting to other countries in the EU, suggesting that there was a problem of the freedom of media. Uh, for example, if you are talking about protests, the number of 12 to 15,000 uh, people participating in these protests is not such an uh, extraordinary, extraordinarily high uh, number. And also these topics are being exported by uh, the media and uh, I can just reflect on the failed attempt of a uh, uh, Slovenian member of the European Parliament, uh, Tania Fajon, uh, trying to hold a debate on the rule of law in Brussels about Slovenia, which failed. And then I believe that your rights as uh, the representative of the media have not been uh, violated. This is the most important thing. You can report freely without censorship. And the idea that uh, the government should finance the operation of the media is truly a distorted idea. There's just an open issue of the Slovenian press agency, which is going to be resolved uh, next week. I believe that uh, the media holds a cartel agreement and uh, that is why uh, I can only conclude that everything is okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.